Hi, this is Hodor Rabina from DevilsAddis.com. I'm over here with staff member Ralph uh, Amsden in Austin Stadium in Eugene, where Arizona State lost to Oregon 31 to 29. Uh, worse than the uh, three-game uh, winning streak that was uh, cut short uh, is also uh, losing out on the South Division. Uh, Utah won earlier today against uh, Colorado and uh, Arizona State by virtue of uh, that result of the loss tonight um, is not going to win the uh, Pac-12 South. And Ralph, uh, this is another close road uh, loss uh, for, for Arizona State. Um, a lot of uh, familiar themes, uh, but what's some of the more um, prevailing aspects that stood out for you tonight? First of all, you can't dig yourself a hole the way that Arizona State did uh, tonight in in absolutely letting Justin Herbert, Dylan Mitchell, the the trio of you know running backs, the guys they use on fly sweep, uh, fly sweeps to 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 just erupt for almost 400 yards in the first half. Uh, you definitely can't regress to do some of the things that Danny Gonzalez has already spoken out about this year, especially after the Colorado game when you do something good. Uh, and then you automatically, as a defense, uh, just let up and don't play with the same intensity. Uh, there have been times this year where it feels like when it matters most, the defense shows up, and when the defense feels like the offense gave them a little bit of a reprieve, they go out and they take a rest on the field. And I think that really showed up uh, when Oregon went on uh, a late, late second-half touchdown drive uh, with, I think, 50 seconds left on the clock. Uh, and that really put Arizona State into ultimately a hole that they, they, they were not able to, to dig out of, even though they did a lot of digging in that second half. Now we talk about the defense, and it clearly was a tale of two halves. I mean, not only did Oregon score only three points in the second half, Merlin Robinson, who served a uh, targeting suspension in the first half, played in the second half. It was just a brand new defense uh, that, that we saw. Um, I know that maybe some will look at it as an excuse, but some will look at it as just a cold, hard fact that there were a lot of uh, true freshmen playing, uh, not only playing for Arizona State, but actually, but actually starting. And uh, Danny Gonzalez, the defensive coordinator, said after the game really took uh, a whole half for those young players to, to really get their sea legs um, underneath them, so to speak, and uh, really uh, slow, have the game slow down for them. Uh, it's really unfortunate because I don't know uh, how many times uh, you're going to have uh, Justin Herbert, uh, the best quarterback in the Pac-12, I think, in many eyes, uh, pass for only, quote unquote, 262 yards, have two touchdowns, two interceptions, and again, like I said, only scoring three points uh, in, in the second half, uh, and, and still come out, come, come out on losing end. So there, there are definitely issues with the defense, there's no doubt about that, but I think we really have to take a close look right now at the offense. Um, I felt that the defense definitely gave this offense all the opportunities in the world, a shutout, uh, a shutout through a third quarter, and uh, Arizona State uh, really sputtered uh, from the time the second half started until the very end of the game. Yeah, and you saw some things from Arizona State's defense tonight that you don't typically see. How long has it been since we've seen Kobe Williams get burned, if ever? I don't know if we've ever seen uh, seen that. Uh, but then you also have uh, it's just an absolute breath of fresh air to get interceptions from Ashari Crosswell, a freshman, to get an interception from Cam Phillips at the end of the game, uh, who is a freshman. You got to see the difference between an Arizona State defense with Merlin Robertson and without, uh, and so it's one of the you know the old adage you don't know what you've got till it's gone. Well, we got to witness in the first half what an Arizona State defense looks like without Merlin Robertson, and it's not it, it wasn't pretty, and so. Um, you know, the, there were some things out of this defense that, that were encouraging. There were some things that you, you absolutely hate to see uh, Rennell Wren not being disciplined at the end of the game. And, and ultimately, uh, the fumble by Manny Wilkins had, had sort of cost them the game. But as far as the clock goes, you, you're in it until you're not. And, uh, and going off sides at the end of the game really cost Arizona State. Uh, penalties were a huge issue for the defense. Offensively, I don't, I don't really know what to say. You have... Eno Benjamin go over 100 yards for the eighth time this year. You have Nikhil Harry go over 100 yards receiving for the fourth time this year. Those two do everything that they're supposed to. You didn't see much out of really anybody else. You got one good play from Frank Darby on a touchdown, but he also drops a, a, a ball. You have drops from Kyle Williams, and I know he's not getting open. This scheme uh, isn't really doing you know the, the best things for uh, making sure that Kyle Williams is as productive as he was last year, uh, but still, with those balls hit your hands, you can't 
you can't let him go. We've seen some mistakes from Ayuk. He did score a fourth and three 25-yard touchdown to get Arizona State back in this game. But you, everybody can't be hit and miss. Some people have to be on, and even Nikhil Harry today dropped two balls uh, that, that really put Arizona State um, in a bad place. And, and Arizona State, to be honest, had a lot of things go their way, um, uh, such as recovering their own fumbles, which happened every time until it didn't at the very end of the game. Yeah, and uh, also I think one, one of the, the stats that's going to be the biggest eyesore from this contest tonight, three out of 17 in, 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 th- in third down conversions. I mean, it's almost a miracle that Arizona State was really this close to tying the game, if not winning it, with such a poor, poor uh, th- third down conversion. Manny Wilkins, uh, 15 out of 32 for, for 187 yards. Uh, not, not really a great completion percentage. That's something that really Manny Wilkins has been doing very well. In, in, in the last few games, but uh, but again, I think that really goes hand in hand um, with the drop passes, with uh, only only converting uh, three three third downs uh, in this game. Uh, really, just a lot of issues for the offense, which maybe were somewhat corrected in the second half. But I think again, it was really uh, the story of the defense giving this offense each and every opportunity they could to get back into this game, and the offense simply did not grab it. So now it's on to a very. Um, anticlimactic to Tertola Cup in Tucson. Uh, Arizona State uh, lo- loses a close game. Again, uh, is not going to win the South Division. Uh, Arizona was trounced by, by Washington State. Uh, so they, they're right now fighting for, fighting for bowl el- eligibility. So if uh, that's something that um, the Wildcats um, have, have something to play for, Arizona State, besides the obvious pride factor in, in a Tertola Cup, also trying to get probably a, a better uh, a bowl uh, game for them, uh, not probably stay away from that at large bowl, which is probably going to set them one or two time zones away. Uh, just to talk a little about the Tortola Cup, Ralph. Um, it, you think it'll be easy, hard for Arizona State to, to bounce back uh, for a game that carries so much emotion year in and year out? I think it's going to be extremely hard in that they're going to be back to back road games, which they've proven that. You know, they've got a ways to go. Uh, but these are two teams, you talk about Oregon and Arizona, that both took their losses to Arizona State last year very personally. I talked to Thomas Graham Jr. after the game here today, and he said that loss meant a lot to me, and I, I planned on coming out here and shutting Nikhil Harry down. And for the most part, I mean, they targeted him five times in a row in the third quarter, and outside of an interference call, he really... I mean, he, he really played quite well. well. On the other side of that, you've got Khalil Tate. And these are all guys from the same recruiting class that I saw at all these different camps, whether it was in Los Angeles or out in Baltimore. I talked to Khalil Tate at Pac-12 Media Day, and the first thing he said to me is, I want every single Arizona State fan to remember what the score was when I got hurt. And he, he has been thinking about getting back into a game against Arizona State and trying to... Uh, finish what he started, which was building that early lead and trying to get a win in the Territorial Cup. Um, because Khalil Tate's legacy as far as the, the, the season that he's had um, being a Heisman contender is sullied. And now he's in a position where um, to, to save anything, uh, he's going to have to come in and prove that you know after a just embarrassing loss in Pullman, that he has the ability uh, to, to beat Arizona State. And then not all will be a loss um, for University of Arizona. And so I think it's going to be extremely difficult just based on the level of motivation uh, that the University of Arizona has. I think we all remember what happened last time uh, ASU went down to Tucson. I think we almost saw a head coach fired then, but obviously <laughs> they chose to bring uh, to bring Todd Graham back. Just a, It's been a very, very strange season. I don't think, and, and the Terri- Territorial Cup's always, you know, uh, its own thing, yeah. uh, regardless of, of, of anybody's record going into that game. So I, I don't know what to expect. I just know that there's absolutely nothing that ASU can take for granted. And there's gonna there's some seniors that really need to go out and probably redeem themselves uh, in this game. Rennell Wren, chief amongst them, I think could be Nikhil Harry's last game. We don't know. Um, he's going to have to, you know, he's going to want to go out and, and, and try to do some special things. Uh, and then for these freshmen, this is going to be their, really their first taste of it. The seniors need to help these freshmen set the tone for what to expect in the Territorial Cup. So once again, Arizona State has to pick itself uh, off of the mat after a uh, close and disappointing uh, lo- loss on the road. And uh, we'll see uh, at Territorial Cup, which again, might mean more to Arizona than it means to Arizona State uh, in terms of postseason implications uh, if the Sun Devils uh, can prevail and uh, 
with the win of the Territorial Cup, uh, they, they, they will be 7-5, uh, and five, so at least matching uh, the regular season record from, from last year, ensuring a winning season, both uh, overall and in Pac-12. So uh, those are some of the um, uh, different uh, aspects to look uh, for this game, and we'll talk about it at length uh, for the entire week. For Ralph Amazon, this is Hodor Bino, reporting from Austin Stadium in Eugene, Oregon.